Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 267. In this whole entire disgusting Jeffrey Epstein nightmare, there are several key figures who played leadership roles and who acted as key components for what was going on. And one of those people, most assuredly, was Jean-Luc Brunel. This is a man who was in it deep. Him and Jeffrey Epstein were not only involved professionally with MC2, but they were very close personally. Jean-Luc Brunel visited him many times in jail. Jean-Luc Brunel was always around his properties. And there are, there are, Brunel was staying at Epstein's house, in fact, while Epstein was in the clink. Now we have new photographs coming out of Jean-Luc Brunel and Ghislaine Maxwell on Jeffrey Epstein's island. Once again, adding more meat to the bone and adding a little bit more context to the story. These two people were intricate parts in what was occurring, not only on that island, but elsewhere. Jean-Luc Brunel according to allegations, was involved in trafficking girls from multiple parts of the world, multiple continents, to the United States and to Jeffrey Epstein and to others. And this man has not had to answer for any of this. In fact, nobody even knows where he is. This man needs to be indicted under some RICO charges, and he most certainly has to be included in any kind of conspiracy case that is built because he was not somebody on the outside looking in. Again, not only is he alleged to have procured girls from all over the world for Jeffrey Epstein to abuse, he is accused of himself being involved in the trafficking ring, directly implicated. So this is somebody who is, if you had uh, a board in front of you with all of their pictures up, like they used to do when the the crime uh, trafficking teams and the uh, organized uh, crime teams, when they were going after the mafia, the way that they would have their boards built, you would have Epstein and Maxwell right up at the top. And we're talking about just the, the, the operation right here that in, in, in question, not the overall operation, but the players right here that were working on the ground to make this trafficking operation go. You would have Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell as co-conspirators and co-bosses, in my opinion. Then right below them, you would have Jean-Luc Brunel almost in like a consigliere type of position, like third in command almost, with the very important job of providing girls from Europe and other parts of the world for the trafficking ring. Then underneath him, you would have the core four, Sarah Kellen Vickers, Adriana Ross, Leslie Groff, and Nadia Marcinkova. And that is how the command structure was laid out. Now, again, we're not going into the whole um, operation that was being run here, right? Because we know that there were people that were running them as assets as well. I'm talking about the command structure of this cell of the wider trafficking organization. So Jean-Luc Brunel is not just somebody on the outer rings. He's not just somebody who might have a little bit of information and who is a witness. This is somebody who is a person of of great, great knowledge of what occurred with Jeffrey Epstein, one, and two, he is somebody directly implicated in trafficking young girls across state lines, international lines, and of abusing girls with Jeffrey Epstein as well. So tonight's article is from the New York Post, and this article was authored by Kate Sheehy. The headline... Photos show Ghislaine Maxwell, Jean-Luc Brunel on Epstein's Island. Bombshell new photos obtained by the Post show Jeffrey Epstein's alleged sex victim recruiter, co-conspirator, 
fellow child abuser, general all-around scumbag, Ghislaine Maxwell and modeling agency pal, co-conspirator, child abuser, another general all-around scumbag, pal Jean-Luc Brunel, romping together on the hedge funders, pedophiles island. And again, these pictures have not been um, in the public before. I think Daily Mail might have run them last night. But as far as them being relatively new, they are all relatively new. And the whole gallery is um, available through the link. So the link will be posted in the description box like usual. So I would suggest obviously going to check out these photos if you have not seen them yet. The stunning snaps offer an inside look at the pair's this-close relationship and a slice of life on Epstein's disturbing paradise turned orgy island. Again, Ghislaine Maxwell and Jean-Luc Brunel were super tight. All three of them, Maxwell, Epstein, and Brunel, were very, very close. They acted in concert with each other to make sure that this operation ran as smoothly as possible. Jean-Luc Brunel had his gig, Ghislaine Maxwell had her gig, and then obviously Jeffrey Epstein would come in and finish everything off with his monstrous behavior. But they all had their job chiseled out for them, and they all were connected with their crimes, and not only the trafficking crimes, remember, but a a ton of financial crimes obviously were occurring at the same time. So these three most definitely sit at the top of your chart when you're talking about the leadership. And it's very clear to me that Maxwell and Brunel were working together with each other's knowledge, both knowing what was going on, to further the criminal enterprise put into play by Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein. Thus, they were engaging in an an, an illegal criminal conspiracy that would fall well within the structure of RICO crimes. The cozy pair caught playfully nuzzling on camera with Brunel grabbing Maxwell and appearing to jokingly try to kiss her as she covers herself. And... It was the kind of pictures you would expect from people that are very intimate with one another, people who know each other very well, not people who are just business partners or people who just met each other. These are people that obviously know each other well, they're very friendly, and they are close enough to take pictures such as this on their good buddy Jeffrey Epstein's island. In another photo, Maxwell wraps her arms around the laughing talent agency Honcho's waist Er, full stop, talent agency honcho, huh? How about fellow child abuser, co-conspirator, general all-around scumbag, bipedal serpent, we can go on. But I don't think talent agency honcho is the proper label for this man. Waste and buries her head in his stomach. It's not clear who took the 2003 photos on Epstein's Caribbean Little St. James Island by locals because all of the girls and young women, the pedophile would allegedly fly it, fly on to his pri- fly in on his private jet to sexually please him and his powerful pals. So the locals all knew the deal and they called the island Pedophile Island because everybody knew what was going on. And that's why when Denise George acts like the Virgin Islands should get some of this money as far as the compensation fund, that's why I always just shake my head and snort. Because the officials in the Virgin Islands, not only the populace, the officials were the ones who gave them those those awesome bank rates. I mean, those awesome deals with the banks, the tax rates. The, the officials were the ones who let Jeffrey Epstein do whatever he wanted. So for... Um, Denise George to come out and try and and get a little piece of this as far as financially, that's ludicrous. But there's no doubt that everybody knew what was going on on that island and just listen to what the locals had to say about it. But a source who was a guest on the island, along with Maxwell and Brunel, when the photos were taken, told Britain's The Sun, Ghislaine and Jean-Luc were very close friends. Yes, they most certainly were. The survivors have all come out and said that, the, you know, we, we've heard that from numerous credible sources. So it's not shocking to hear that the source who was on the island 
with them while these pictures were, were taken would come out and say that. On this occasion, she had just returned from the gym and was eating when John Luke suddenly grabbed her. I used to call Ghislaine the Wicked Witch of the West, the source added. She's a bad, bad lady. How many different people are we going to have to hear that from? We've heard it from everybody from Maria Farmer to Virginia Roberts to you name it. Every one of these survivors that had anything to do with Ghislaine Maxwell tells the same story. And the people that were around her as well, the people that she didn't see as her... her um, the people that ran in the same circles as her, the people on her level, well, those people like us, she was never nice to, according to sources. She was always looking down her nose at the peons of the world, the plebes, and that's exactly how she conducted herself. And to hear the person on this island say that she dubbed her the Wicked Witch of the West, that's an absolutely fitting name for her, in my opinion, from everything that we know. Maxwell, 58, is currently in a Brooklyn federal lockup awaiting trial on sex trafficking charges for allegedly recruiting and grooming Epstein's survivors and sexually abusing some herself. Epstein died by suicide in a Manhattan jail cell in August 2019 while awaiting trial, allegedly. Brunel, 74, has not been charged in the case, although he came under investigation in France for sexual harassment last year. We already know as well that uh, uh, Thysia has also said that he assaulted her and other models have come out and said that. There was a news program, I believe it was a 60 Minutes program in like 1988, where he is also accused of rape. So this guy has gotten away with it for a very long time and he's another guy. He has very people in very high places that are close to him at at very at the least uh, according to paperwork with his company, him and Steve Mnuchin were close. So, look, this isn't a guy who is just running around and doesn't have any friends in high places. He's another man with friends in high places who has been able to get away with abusing young girls and women for decades and nobody has stepped in to stop him nobody has thought it would be a good idea to pump the brakes on this fool well you all know what time it is on the jeffrey epstein show we are most certainly airing this fool out we are most certainly pressing this idiot and we are going to make sure that somebody like jean-luc brunel does not wiggle off of the hook He has also been accused of supplying underage girls to Epstein, including three 12-year-old sisters from France as a birthday present, and drugging and raping several models himself, according to court documents and interviews with some of his alleged survivors. And the sad part is, folks, from listening to the survivors and others who have knowledge of what occurred, there were countless girls brought in by Jean-Luc Brunel and abused. And it was revealed the other night that another person, this Gypsy Gita character, was acting maybe in, in the same way. I, I don't, you know, I don't know if it was, he was as prolific as Jean-Luc Brunel or anything like that, but he most certainly was the one who introduced Shantae Davies to Epstein and Maxwell. And then you see him in the book right? The black book, his name. And it says about his two different girls that worked, worked for him or whatever. And then there was another name in there, Stefan. And in parentheses, it said better than gypsy, something like that. So my point is there were several people that have the smell of Jean-Luc Brunel on them in this case, who could have acted in the same kind of procurer's role. And I, I think that's something that must be explored as well by the prosecutors, especially after Shante Davies' revelations the other night. Brunel even allegedly provided girls for an orgy for Britain's Prince Andrew, a.k.a. the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family, court documents have claimed. The royal has denied any wrongdoing. In a 2015 affidavit, well-known Epstein and Maxwell accuser Virginia Roberts said she was groomed by Epstein to have sex with Brunel and that the model agency Honcho co-conspirator, fellow child abuser, general all-around scumbag, offered up other girls to the multimillionaire financier, 
pedophile, including the young sisters. And again, I find Virginia to be one of the most credible witnesses that I have ever looked into. Her story has been rock solid. And a lot of these things that she has said have proven to be corroborated later on down the road. So when she says that Jean-Luc Brunel had a key role within this organization and that Jean-Luc Brunel was providing young girls triplets, 12-year-old triplets, for old dickbag Epstein to abuse, I believe her. Jeffrey bragged they were 12-year-olds and flown over from France because they're really poor over there and their parents needed the money, she said in the affidavit. It, it, It makes me so disgusted when I think about that. The fact that it's the most, the poorest uh, amongst us, the poorest people in the world, the poorest girls in the world are the ones that these guys go after and they continuously abuse them and there's nobody to stand up for them and to, to say, hey, what the F is going on here? And you see it over and over and over again, be it serial killers with missing girls and nobody caring because the girls are quote unquote prostitutes to situations like this where nobody pays attention because the people involved are so-called members of polite society. I have news for you. If I was an FBI agent or a prosecutor and I got any report about one of these sick, disgusting scuzzballs in so-called polite society... I would investigate it with vigor because guess what? One thing we have learned is that just because you have money or status, that does not make you a good person. And it does not make you above the law either. Brunel, who ran the MC2 modeling agency in Miami, Florida, and Karen Models in Paris, is credited with discovering supermodels such as Christy Turlington and Angie Everhart. Yeah, that's all fine and well. Good for them, but I don't really care. I always find it weird when they add that he he uh, discovered Christy, uh, Christy Turlington and Angie Everhart to the articles. Who cares? What does that have to do with anything? Epstein helped him uh, finance MC2 and flight records from the Money Man's private jet show Brunel was aboard the plane, nicknamed the Lolita Express by Caribbean locals, more than 20 times between 1998 and 2005. That That doesn't even begin to explain the story of him in New York or him in Florida or him at Zorro or them together in France or them at Ghislaine Maxwell's Casa and Belgravia. So that's just the flight logs to the island, folks. In some of the newly surfaced photos, Brunel appears to be boarding a plane on Epstein's island dressed in yellow pants, a mustard-colored patterned shirt, and orange shoes. The flamboyant Frenchman is reportedly colorblind. Yeah, you could tell. He looked like Hannibal Lecter at the end of Silence of the Lambs when Hannibal Lecter was about to go and eat Dr. Chilton's ass. That's what this this moron Jean-Luc Brunel looks like in the picture. Stupid-ass outfit. What a clown. Colorblind? Must be. His outfit is ridiculous. Other snapshots show him wearing a psychedelic-looking blue, black, white, and yellow top with a dark baseball hat that says Israel Army. He can also be seen in a banana and banana yellow shorts and a plain light blue t-shirt. Oh, an Israel Army hat, huh? I wonder if his good friend Ehud Barak hooked him up with that hat. I mean, I'm sure that they were hanging out together. At Epstein's at some point, I'm sure that Jean-Luc Brunel and Ehud Barak, our homies, would be, you know, a uh, a likely source for him to get some Israel Israeli army swag, right? Makes you think, though, doesn't it? Meanwhile, Maxwell is dressed just as casually, either in a white tank top with black spaghetti strings or a light white linen shirt with khakis. Brunel vanished after Epstein's suicide, allegedly, and it is unclear where he is, with recent reports saying he is hiding out anywhere from South America to back in France. He has denied any wrongdoing, as has Maxwell. Brunel's lawyer has insisted his client is not in hiding. Well, I think the most likely of places for Jean-Luc Brunel is France. He's a French citizen, 
and the French are most certainly not going to extradite him to America, especially right now with the way relations are. So I would bet money, I would say if I'm a betting man, but you all know that I most certainly am, I would put a, a, a significant sized wager on Jean-Luc Brunel being in France right now. In fact, I would make the odds of him being in France at about minus 190 right now. A significant favorite. And I think that as the story moves forward and we hear from more survivors, it is inevitable that there will be girls from France who are going to come forward and then the French authorities are going to be compelled into action, at least one hopes. But Jean-Luc Brunel must be indicted. This is a man who was an intricate part of what occurred and a man who has gotten away with his disgusting draconian behavior for far too long. It is time for Jean-Luc Brunel to have the same view that Ghislaine Maxwell is enjoying. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. The link to this article is in the description box. All right, everybody. Once again, we'll be back tomorrow and we will rock and roll all over again. I hope you all have a great night.